Hi students, in this video we are going to quickly revise the topic current electricity. Now we know that electricity is rate of flow of charge. Now if we have a cross section and through this cross section if you have Q plus charge and Q minus charge both flowing in the same direction then Q net will be Q plus minus Q minus. Okay. Now if this current is a steady current then this Q net that is the total charge it is proportional to the time. The proportionality constant is current, so we have I equal to Q net divided by T. Okay. Now electric conduction, it can be in two cases, two types. One is through in solid conductors, the other one is in electrolytic solution. Now in solid conductors, the conduction is through free electrons. In electrolytic solution, the conduction is both through positive charges as well as the negative charges. Okay. Now next comes the topic resistance. Now resistance, it is R equal to rho L by A. Okay. Now, if you have a wire which is which is stretched, now if it is stretched, its length and area both are undergoing a change. So, in that case, you will be using this formula. Though R is equal to rho L by A, it appears as if R is proportional to L, inversely proportional to A, but that is not the case. Uh, in, for those cases where you have a wire stretching kind of situation, there you have to use this formula R1 by R2 equal to L1 square by L2 square. L1 square by L2 square directly proportional to length but here it will be L1 square by L2 square inversely proportional to area so it will be A2 square by A1 square okay but in case the area is constant in case the area is constant then you have R1 by R2 equal to L1 by L2 then R1 is proportional to R is proportional to L and R is inversely proportional to area provided L is constant so in that case if L is constant R1 by R2 equal to A2 by a1 okay now for as we have seen that in solid conductor the conduction is through free electrons okay so next topic is the drift of free electrons or drift velocity of free electrons now initially u average this is zero that is when there is no applied potential there is no applied electric field electrons are in a state of random motion so initial average velocity is zero now on application of potential there is electric field so acceleration is given by this expression acceleration is force by mass force is QE so Q is minus E because of electron so you have this expression and the average velocity final average velocity on application of potential it is given by minus E E tau by M and this final average velocity in the presence of applied potential is called the drift velocity now as you can see there is a minus sign and all the other quantities except electric field is vector are scalar so electric field is vector and here drift velocity is vector so the minus sign shows that the electrons are having a drift velocity opposite to the direction of electric field now this is the expression for current density j is equal to n e square tau by m into e okay j is the current density that is current for unit area this relation between current and drift velocity this is very important this is often asked uh, the relation between current and drift velocity i is equal to n a e v d n into a area of cross section into e charge of electron into drift velocity okay mobility of charge carriers it is given by the expression magnitude of drift velocity per unit electric field so that is equal to e tau by m so mobility is inversely proportional to m obviously if mass is more mobility will be less okay then you have the ohm's law so ohm's law normal form v proportional to i so v equal to ri at constant physical condition temperature should be constant this is one form of Ohm's law. There is another form of Ohm's law, E uh, electric field, intensity of electric field proportional to current density. Rho is the proportionality constant and it is called resistivity. Okay. Then current density J is equal to I by A. So you need to understand both the forms of Ohm's law. Okay. Then comes the limitations of Ohm's, Ohm's law. So you must go through all the non-linear graph. See if a conductor is following or if if you have a conductor which is following the ohm's law you will get a linear relation between voltage voltage and current for non-linear graph that means they are non-ohmic conductors they are not following ohm's law ohm's law is not a universal law ohm's law is followed only by ohmic conductors non-ohmic conductors they don't follow ohm's law okay next comes the types of resistors one mark questions can be asked on based on this so types of resistors you have two kinds of resistors wire bound resistors and carbon resistors then you must go through the advantages of carbon resistors this is given in your ncrt textbook okay then comes the electric electrical power so in series combination in parallel combination so the expression is identical to that of 
कैपेसिटेंस इक्वलेंट कैपेसिटेंस इन सीरीज इक्वलेंट कैपेसिटेंस इन पैरेलल और द ऑपोजिट ऑफ द इक्वलेंट रेजिस्टेंस इन सीरीज इक्वलेंट रेजिस्टेंस इन पैरेलल ओके देन यू हैव द टेम्परेचर डिपेंडेंस ऑफ रेजिस्टिविटी रो टी इज इक्वल टू रो नॉट वन प्लस अल्फा टी माइनस टी नॉट सो रो टी इज द रेजिस्टिविटी एट टेम्परेचर टी रो नॉट इज द रेजिस्टिविटी एट टेम्परेचर टी नॉट सो दिस इज हाउ रेजिस्टिविटी वेरीज अल्फा इज कॉल्ड द टेम्परेचर कोफिशियंट ऑफ रेजिस्टिविटी ओके द ग्राफ बिटवीन रेजिस्टिविटी एंड टेम्परेचर फॉर कंडक्टर्स एलॉयज निक्रोम एंड सेमी कंडक्टर्स दिस ग्राफ इट इज ऑफ एन आस्ट ओके नाउ दिस रिलेशन रो इज इक्वल टू रेजिस्टिविटी इज इक्वल टू एम बाई एन ई स्क्वायर टाउ ओके एम इज द मास ऑफ द चार्ज कैरियर्स एन इज द नंबर डेंसिटी ऑफ चार्ज कैरियर्स ई इज द चार्ज ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स और चार्ज एंड टाउ इज द एवरेज रिलैक्सेशन टाइम नाउ फॉर कंडक्टर्स रेजिस्टिविटी इज गवर्न बाय एवरेज रिलैक्सेशन टाइम सो फॉर कंडक्टर्स रो इज इनवर्सली एज यू कैन सी सो रो इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू टाउ सो इफ यू इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर they uh, the kinetic energy will increase and there will be more frequent collisions more frequent collisions okay now if there are more frequent collisions that means tau has decrease so if tau decreases resistivity will increase for semiconductors rho is inversely proportional to n so if you increase the temperature there will be breakage of coulomb bonds in semiconductors now if there is a breakage of coulomb bonds number density of free electrons will increase so if number density of free electrons increases resistivity will decrease so for semiconductor resistivity decreases on increasing temperature for conductors resistivity increases on increasing temperature then uh, one more question may be asked on this concept manganese and constant n are used in wire bound st standard resistors why because they have low dependence of resistivity with temperature that is or uh, when the temperature varies the resistance doesn't change doesn't fluctuates much much so that is the reason they are used in wire bound standard resistors okay then you have the combination of resistors series combination parallel combination you know already know if resistors are in series how to find the equivalent resistance uh, if resistors are in parallel how to find the equivalent resistance but you also need to know that in series combination of resistors current is same if resistors are different then potential will be different and since current is same so v is proportional to r so v1 by v2 if there are two resistors then v1 by v2 equal to r1 by r2 so uh, means potential will be divided in the ratio of the resistors okay in parallel combination potential is same so current is inversely proportional to r so current is divided in inverse ratio of the resistance so next comes the topic electromotive force terminal potential difference and internal resistance now electromotive force is the potential difference between the two terminals of a cell in an open circuit terminal potential difference is the a potential difference across the two terminals of a cell in a closed circuit that is when current is being drawn from the cell internal resistance is the resistance offered by the cell the electrolyte and the resistance offered by the electrolyte and the electrode of the cell okay now under normal condition when current is drawn from the cell that is called discharging so in that case you will have e is equal to v plus ir e is the emf v is the terminal potential difference so as you can see in discharging emf will be greater than the terminal potential difference the net current is given by the expression i is equal to e divided by r plus r r is the external resistance and small r is the internal resistance charging is the case when the current flows into the cell so in that case v terminal potential difference equal to e plus ir so in this case for charging terminal potential difference will be greater than the emf okay then comes the grouping of cells three types of grouping series grouping of cells parallel grouping of cells mixed grouping of cells okay for each case you must be able to find the e expression for equivalent emf equivalent internal resistance and condition for maximum current okay then comes the kirchhoff rule two rules the first rule that is algebraic sum of current meeting at a point is zero the second rule algebraic sum of product of current and resistance for a closed loop it is zero so first rule follows from principle of conservation of charge second rule follows from principle of conservation of energy then you have In the later part you have three devices wheatstone bridge meter bridge and potentiometer so you must go through the wheatstone bridge principle you must be able to get the wheatstone bridge principle by applying kirchhoff rule then comes the meter bridge which works on the principle of wheatstone bridge and application of meter bridge problems based on a meter bridge as given in your ncert textbook solved example as well as unsolved examples okay in the exercise then comes the potentiometer so potentiometer work 
working principle of the potentiometer, applications, two applications, comparison of EMF of cells and second application is determination of internal resistance of the cell. So these are the things uh, uh, which are there in the chapter, current electricity. So I guess uh, you'll be able to revise, you should be able to revise this chapter in around maximum half an hour time. So this I am saying for uh, students of Assam High Secondary Education Board students who are going to write their uh, physics examination of, on 9th. Today they had their mathematics paper and I heard that uh, two questions, two four marks questions were wrong. Uh, one question was from trigonometry I guess. So if you have attempted those questions, I think you will be given marks, four marks for both the questions. For students of CBC uh, board, my best wishes and uh, in the last few, uh, whatever time now left for you, don't take any pressure and you have worked hard for one year. So in the in these last few what, the time, last two, one, two day, whatever time you are having, don't study anything new. Okay. So whatever you have studied, go, go through all those things, revise those things and do your paper well. Okay. Good luck.